beautiful beloved family welcome back guys we're going to hop straight into it as always you guys so right now i am taking this lip mask and it's a, actually a sleeping um lip mask guys but i'm going to use it um for about 20 minutes and guys these lip masks are really really good if you're like me in the cold seasons and you have really dry and um, lips that peel and so guys now I am taking my toner and I'm going to go ahead and wipe any other dirts and oils from my skin after I've washed it and guys I know I may sound a little off today and that is because guys I have not been quite feeling like myself guys and I don't know what happened, but I'm having slight pain in my neck, in my ear, in my head area. But I made this video and I had to go ahead and get it um, edited so I can get it uploaded for you guys. And so now, guys, I am taking these vitamin um, C drops and it's a serum and I'm just, you know, wiping it in um, into my skin. So guys, today I wanted to talk about something that has really, really been like a thorn in my side, guys. Okay, um, and now guys, I'm taking this, um, these Neutrogena um, Hyaluronic Acid um, Serum, and I'm also going to, um, you know, put that on my skin, guys. So lately, guys... Um, I've been experiencing a lot of things with people that are close to me and people that I love. Okay, guys, so anyway, back to the topic of today's videos or today's video, guys. <laughs> so, um, guys, I've been dealing with a lot of frustration from uh, family members and people that I love. And as I was thinking about what this video would be about today or just meditating on what it would be about today, guys, a song came in mind to me and it was the Jonathan McReynolds song. Um, the word where, um, he's asking God, you know, does that mean that he would protect them from people? And I think the name of it is people guys, but I like to listen to that song when I feel like my patience is get a, getting a little short with, you know, those that are close to me. Because, guys, you know, let's be real. Usually the people that get to you most or the devil can use to pull at your heartstrings the most are those that you love and care about. And, guys, this has been a tactic that the enemy has used on me for many, many years, as long as I can remember. Okay. Really quickly, guys. Um, 
I went ahead and put that Elf's Wax Pencil on my brows and I set it with that Black Opal Setting Powder. And now I'm taking this Elf's Luminous um, Putty Primer and I'm just priming my face, you know, before I get started, guys. And so, yeah. And so, guys, it's just been so much, you know. Um, when I say it's been the kids, you know, even the, the boys' girlfriends, um, my mom, you know, just different things. And, you know, even my um, fiance, guys, like, really quickly, guys, I want to say something about my brow routine. So, really quickly, guys, I did not do my camera, my, <laughs> my brows on camera this time, guys. It's pretty much the same routine that I've been doing. Um, the only difference this time um, is the brush that I've been using to carve out my brows. And it is the MAC 212 brush. And it is this brush here. And it's just like a flat, um, a flat top concealer brush. And guys, I like it. Also, I am back to doing my little brows, my skinny brows, like I did for many years. Um, just haven't been really feeling the big Instagram brows lately. But yeah, guys, I just wanted to let you know that just in case I forget to say it during my voiceover. But yeah, back to the video, guys. But yeah, guys, what I noticed is, you know, um, like I said, the devil will use these people that he know you love and care about to really, really try to, you know, um, get you out your character or move you from your place with God. And guys, I'm not going to lie. Like lately, I have been feeling um, kind of discouraged and it's really because like, you know, when you deal with, um, you know, physical ailments and those sort of things, you know, sometimes it could be a lot. And then, you know, on top of that, you know, um, people tend to, when they're used to you being so independent and overly helpful, you know, um, it's not their fault per se, you know, when you're not able to do those things, but, Lately, I've just been expecting them to notice, like, on the days where, you know, I may struggle and, you know, to pick up the slack. And that hasn't been the case. But, guys, it's been just so many things. You know, when the devil seen that he couldn't move me from my place with different things, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, he started, um, you know, attacking in other ways. And so, guys, really quickly, I'm just taking that concealer that was left over from the top of my brows, um, which you guys know is the Mika K in the shade 09. And I'm just um, correcting the spots um, where I have hyperpigmentation from breakouts. And, guys, now I'm taking this Wet n' Wild. It's a cream eyeshadow in the sand in the, <laughs> in the shade... Um, sand castles and i'm using this as a primer before my shadow guys but yeah so i have been expecting them to like you know just pick up the slack and i started to feel really weary guys it was times where you know it was really hard for me to get out of bed and you know i was just like struggling you know to do the normal things that i would do which is pretty much i feel like a lot of times is to serve others and guys I really don't have a issue with that you know that's one of my job is God's children I love to serve others you know it um gives my heart great satisfaction to serve others and to make others happy you know or just lift other spirits up in general and I noticed like, you know, during them times, guys, I was like expecting people to read my mind. Like I got mad at my fiance, you know, um, because I suggested something. And instead of asking him, you know, um, I suggested it and I expected for him to do it. And, you know, when he didn't 
catch on to it. Like I got mad and I really noticed like I was like making myself upset, you know, for pretty much nothing because he's the type of person, you know, anything that I ask him, he pretty much does. And, you know, it was like just unnecessary drama that I was creating within myself. But, you know, um, the Lord started dealing with me because it is. And um, guys, like back in my sin, I used to really, really struggle with being prideful. Guys, like I just did not like to ask people for anything. I, you know, I was just overly independent, you know, and the reality of it is, guys, everyone needs somebody. And, you know, realistically, it takes a team, you know, to build, you know, and, and so the Lord dealt with me because of that. And I realized, you know, basically I was being prideful um, because I didn't want to ask. I just wanted, you know, him to volunteer. I don't know, guys. Very weird situation. But, um, yeah, it was just like little things. And so um, recently, guys, um, I had a dream. The Lord gave me a dream. And in the dream, guys, um, I had a dream that Basically, I was getting a new dryer, okay? And in this dream, there was a spirit, there was a demon spirit um, trying to take this dryer from me or steal this dryer from me, okay? Um, not long after that, my dryer started to act up. And, you know, of course, you know, it was still usable, you know, by God's grace, I was still able to use it. But um, it was so loud, guys, that it would you would literally hear it um, like <clears throat> in other parts of the house as it would be drying. And so, you know, I made the conscious decision to go ahead and replace it. And I did, you know, and so the new dryer comes and then all of a sudden, guys, um, the kids tell me that it wasn't really getting hot. And I'm just like, Lord, please don't let these people been install me a bad dryer. You know, please let everything be okay, you know, in Jesus name. Because guys, like my spiritual patience was was on it wasn't completely on empty, but it was pretty low, guys. And I've already had a bad experience with this place once before. Okay. Um, years ago, but you know, overall it worked out and I probably should have possibly considered looking, you know, um, looking around before I actually just made a commitment to buy. But guys around that time, like I said, my energy was on low. My spiritual patience was on low and I just wanted to get it over with. And this is another thing that I'm going to come back to, okay, about patience. And so um, I called and I, did, I really didn't like what the lady was saying to me regarding my options about this dryer. But even still with everything, okay, I, I felt myself again very, very frustrated with this woman, guys. But the Lord held my tongue like he he held my tongue and he made me hold my peace. And I'm telling you this part because during the process of my family members, OK, doing all this stuff and, you know, putting all of these negative feelings on me and me putting them on myself, you know, when it came time to dealing with this lady, guys, I, you know, I had been holding it in um, for so many days that I felt as if in that moment when I was talking to her, that she was going to get the backlash of everything that I had been enduring. But God is good because he held my peace. And, 
you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, act out or anything. I was just like, you know, okay, moving forward. And so a lot of you don't know me in real life, but I'm just going to just talk about the different things, the different situations, because um, I've made a decision when I come on here, I want to be as transparent as possible in the things that I can, because I feel like we all go through these things. We all have bad days, you know, just like we all have good days. And I feel like, you know, people try to hide the bad days. And, you know, a lot of people don't like to talk about the things of the bad days. But I notice, you know, it helps. It helps with us knowing that, you know, when we're going through things, A, we're not the only ones, you know, that is experiencing these type of things, you know. And so coming back to the part about the patients. Um, so a lot of times what the enemy will do, okay, guys, he'll start to plant these seeds. And a lot of times in the beginning, guys, they be really, really subtle. And, you know, you may not notice it at first because they're so subtle. Like um, the devil is really cunning and how he uses his tactics against God's children, but they'll start off really, really subtle guys. And then, you know, as that seed is planted and it starts to grow with each encounter of each thing that is happening, okay, it usually turns into a bigger deal or a bigger sin, okay, um, that will manifest from the things that you're experiencing, and so, guys, I don't know if I've ever told you guys before, but <clears throat> excuse me, guys. One of my spiritual gifts is that I can actually feel um, emotions from other people. Um, it's almost like I can tap in to different emotions with people um, and I'm able to recognize different spirits that people are dealing with. And so on top of all of this, guys, I was feeling different emotions, you know, from my children, from my mom, from my fiance, and it became very overwhelming, guys. And so because I'm, I'm spiritually sensitive in that way, and I was experiencing all these different just negative emotions from those around me, guys, it started to become like a blanket over me spiritually. And it was heavy. And and guys, I've felt this feeling many, many a times in the past when when I'm going through spiritual attacks, okay? And just being around certain people um, that are dealing with um, really strong demonic spirits. And there were days, guys, I was getting up and I wasn't really feeling like getting out the bed. And, you know, I was hearing the enemy speak to me in my mind, guys. And the enemy was telling me to give up. The enemy was telling me, it, it, the enemy was saying things like, why even try? Just don't even try. Like, what's the point? <clears throat> and I was hearing all of these things. And, you know, I kept praying because in the midst of everything, guys, when when I'm in trouble or when the enemy comes at me like a fluid, my first defense is to call on God. And I'm so very, very thankful to the Lord for... um you know, him um, instilling that in me when it comes to things. But guys, it was a lot. Um, so the other day or last week, you know, I go to run errands and go to Walmart, guys. And I am going to 
say this and I will keep telling people that I really feel like Walmart uses some type of um, technology um, when it comes to like God's children to, um, you know, promote, the, you know, demonic or spiritual attacks, you know, in the store and out, you know, like in the parking lot. But the day was going fine, guys. You know, the enemy kept trying to you know, um, get to me mentally, but I just kept rebuking them. And so, um, yeah, so I go in, get the items I need, come back out, guys, hop in the car, me in heaven, and I go to bags up, guys, and I'm completely on a flat. Completely, guys. When I say the tire was down to the rim, it was completely flat. And I was just like, okay, great. So, you know, um, my godson calls his grandpa to come help us change the tire. And guys, look at the trunk. And my spare is missing, guys. Like, I have no spare tire. And so I'm just like, this is great. What the world happened to my spare tire? And so really quickly, guys, I want to say, um, I know it looked as if I did a cut crease, but I did not. Um, I did put concealer right there, but I ended up blurring that that defined line that you make for a cut crease. And then off camera, guys, I did my liner. I did a wing liner today, and I went ahead and applied my falsies. But yeah, guys, so bagging up from the flat tire day, um, if you guys you know, are subscribed to my channel, you know that the incident when my son was shot, the police illegally impounded my car. And I truly believe during that time, my spare was taken out of my car and was not put back, guys. Okay. And so back to Walmart, you know, I'm calling my oldest son and guys, he him and I, you know, we tend to like have a lot of disagreements with things. Um, I would say out of all of my children, him and I, you know, doesn't have the best relationship. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, guys, he is a type of person where he is truly for himself. Okay. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm just, you know, stating the facts. So, guys, you know, I get him to come up with my, my mom's so-called universal spare tire, guys. And, of course, it does not fit because it is not my mom's universal spare tire. It is another spare tire. And he's not, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, he's not sure where it came from. And guys, this day was just so frustrating, but I kept calling on God, you know, every time I felt myself losing patience, I just said a quick prayer, you know, and God will keep you. He will keep you, um, in the times of trouble. And so guys, really quickly, I'm taking this, um, foundation and God, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my voice. Excuse me, guys, but really quickly, um, I know it's going to show up lighter than what it actually is. Um, but when it oxidizes, guys, it um, it it goes into a darker shade. And not only that, um, the bronzing that I wanted to do today, um, you know, it just worked out perfect for that. And so, guys, I just wanted to tell you, before anybody come for me in the comments or anything and say, or in person and say that my foundation was too light, Okay, I use this foundation on purpose. You know, I know how to do foundation. I know how to choose the correct foundation colors and undertones. I know how to mix foundation. So, guys, this particular time, this was done on purpose. Okay, but anyways, so, of course, I called my mom and, um, 
I never really speak on my mom, but what I will tell you guys is that um, me and my mom also doesn't have the best relationship, guys. And um, I'm not going to lie, this particular day, I had to swallow my pride and it was taking everything in me to call her, but I just had to bite the bullet and call her and tell her that I needed help. Okay. And so my mom comes up and there's a lady with her. Um, I don't know this lady, but my mom, one of the things that she likes to do is when she's around other people, she likes to like sit on her high horse and talk down on her children. And guys, I was getting so frustrated that I was almost in tears because my mom was doing this and I wasn't in the mood. And she was saying little stuff about me in front of this lady in front to heaven while I was in Walmart talking to the, the tire people about getting this new tire. And of course, you know, my daughter tells me because my children always tells me when she tries to say things about me. And guys, I really, really, really got mad. And I remember thinking in that moment and even saying out loud, Lord, why, why did you pick her to give me as a mother? And I remember, guys, um, I had to repent of that um, because I didn't want to you know, seem like I wasn't honoring her in God's eyes at that moment. But guys, the way she was making me feel in at the moment, I really did mean, mean it when I said it. And so, you know, finally, she, finally she left and I was just so relieved because I felt like that I was about maybe to lose my patience with her and come off dis disrespectful, and I didn't want to do that, but um, it was just a lot of things, you know, um, both of my boys have settled into relationships where, you know, they are really, really trying to, you know, just um, build something with the women that they are with. Um, my youngest son, um, he has been going through a lot of pressures because of um, his girlfriend and the things that her dad is taking her through. And guys, sometimes I just want to say, you know, um, how I feel about things. But then the Lord will speak to me because one thing about me, guys, is I'm a very, very truthful person. Like, you know, um, I'm just a firm believer that sometimes the truth hurts, even when it comes to me, you know, and people, you know, telling me things about me or my life. And so I don't really do well with holding my tongue. And a lot of times I know being that way can come off as being harsh, but, you know, it's not meant to be harsh, you know. And so if I feel like I'm going to hurt the person's feelings, I try to say it in, you know, the nicest manner that I possibly can. But realistically, even when you do that, you know, some things, no matter how nice you say it, it just seems harsh, you know, or, you know, rude. But I just didn't like the pressures that was being put on my son. You know, I felt like, you know, something really traumatic just recently happened to him. And, you know, he's trying to get back to himself as best as he knows how. And, you know, I don't want anyone pushing him over the edge, you know, I rebuke that in Jesus name. Like, you know, I don't want anybody, you know, affecting his progress on, you know, dealing with the trauma that he went through and 
just different things. And, you know, God did hear my prayers. The Lord has been comforting him. You know, he's been, you know, healing him, you know, exponentially. And, you know, during it, during it all, if guys, if I didn't have God's grace or his help, to lean on, I don't know what I would do because guys, some days dealing with people, let's be real, you know, people make you just want to close your heart and just, um, different things because, you know, we can be, we can be difficult, difficult creatures at times, you know, stubborn and then the ego and pride and all of these things. And so, I felt like during all of this stuff, I was starting to be more closed off and being the type of person I am because I am a loner, guys, like, you know, I'm content being alone. Um, I don't really have friends or anything. And so, um, you know, in real life, but it would, it's not good for a person like me because it can make me start to become isolated from people. And so one of the days that I was dealing with all of this, the Lord um, was speaking to me and he made me remember that we are in the time where people love will be waxed cold. And, um, you know, one thing the Lord told me years ago, guys, um, after I went through my whole spiritual awakening process is that I have one of the biggest hearts in the universe. Okay. Um, I'm one of God's children that has a really, really big heart. And this is why all of the attacks since I was a young girl from the enemy has been things of my heart. And so, you know, the Lord doesn't want me to close my heart, you know, he gave me the type of heart that he gave me for a reason, you know, to help in my purpose, in his will, in my life. And so, you know, I had just been praying and asking God, you know, to help me just forgive those and, you know, helping not to plant any seeds of you know, unforgiveness or bitterness or anger towards any of these people. And, you know, the, another thing that the Lord had been, um, telling me is that a lot of these people guys really don't understand what they're doing. You know, remember when, you know, God, Jesus was being, um, crucified on the cross and, one of the things that he said is, you know, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. And so, guys, you always have to remember when dealing with these things that, you know, our war is not against flesh and blood. So no matter what these people that, you know, do to us, your war is not with them, but with the spirits that they they are maybe um, dealing with or the spirits that are attached to them, you know, those are the deities or the beings that are actually coming against you, especially if you're a child of God. And if you're, you know, no, if you're trying to live righteously or, you know, just live holy. And so, Remember, guys, you have to pray for those people um, because spiritually, a lot of these people are dead and spiritually, a lot of these people are asleep. And so they really don't know what they're doing, you know, and you have to learn to separate the actual spirit that's coming against you with the person, okay? Okay. Because even though we hate the spirit, right, we're supposed to love the person, you know. And so the Lord had been really, really um, 
just making me highlight and meditate on that, you know. And so just be careful, you know, when you're saying things and when you're feeling things, because even though it may seem like that person is aware or conscious of what what they're doing, okay, um, they're not. You know, a lot of people think that demonic possession or attachment isn't real, guys, but it's very real. And all of us, you know, are dealing with some form of, you know, spirits, whether it is, um, you know, um, through a generational curse, um, soul ties, you know, or just you living in sin in your life and, <clears throat> excuse me, not doing the things that is required of you to do, you know, um, before God. And you must understand that because of this, okay, it is not until you repent and God starts to um, consecrate you or sanctify you and cleanse you of these things that you are dealing with spiritually, okay? And the only way to be um, free of these things is through our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? And so this is why, you know, you have to have a strong prayer life and always stay connected to God because each day, you know, you're going to sin because we're so surrounded by it. So even if you're living holy with all of your being as much as you can, there are so many deceptions and so many things that we don't understand how deep the deception goes in this world with God's children. And so sometimes, guys, or I'm not going to say sometimes, all the time, you know, we end up sinning, whether it's knowingly or unknowingly, guys. And so this is why you have to be humble, you know, because even if you are living righteous, I guarantee you that there is something that you have done throughout your day that you're not even aware of where you have sinned before God. And this is where you have to understand how merciful and how good God's grace is because he allows us to repent daily, he relies it or allows us to, you know, um, pray without season, you know, to help with these different things, you know, that we do. And guys, um, I've just gotten into the habit of when I pray, you know, I just say, you know, at some point in my prayer, Lord, please forgive me of the sins that I do knowingly and unknowingly because the Lord been shown me that, you know, we do things before him that we don't understand, you know, that is a sin before him. And, you know, guys, you got to remember that one of the curses that we were meant to um, endure was that God would make us forget who we are, who we were as a people. And so now, because technology and information is at the palm of your hand, a lot of people are now coming into the things of truth. Okay. A lot of God's children are waking up from their spiritual slumber. And so things that we weren't aware of, because now a lot of us are turning back to the Lord. He's making us aware of 
who we were as his people. And, you know, part of forgetting who you are as a people is forgetting your values, your culture, you know, um, your way of living, you know, just everything. If you don't know who you are and where you come from, okay, you can take on the guise of different cultures and spiritual things and religions that are around you and that are indoctrinated for you to do so like we have been doing guys for many years okay and so um the point of all of this guys i want to say is remember through all things guys only god knows a man's heart okay and because of this, okay, you never know just because a person may seemingly be good on the outside, you never know their thoughts in their heart. And so it's very important when you are dealing with people, no matter how confident they may seem or how good they may seem. You always need God's guidance and his revelations of secret things to show you who a person truly is and their intention in your life, okay? And I know the word says, you know, judge them according to their fruits, okay? But we forget that upon righteous judgment, guys, there are things that we just don't know unless God gives us discernment to know when dealing with people. And so if you're wise and you have you have the understanding to to actually see wisdom and to hear wisdom, then you know that all of these things when determining a person is relevant, okay? Um, a lot of people pick apart verses, but they don't consider the other things that God says. And so the point that I'm making is a person can come from a rough background and been abused and mistreated, you know, their whole life. And the things that they do physically on the outside, a person may say, well, this person is bad. This person is evil. But a lot of times, guys, deep down, that person's heart isn't wicked. Okay? Um, so you just got to remember, let God be the judge of those that you encounter in everything in life. Okay? Um, because we can, we can be wrong and assuming and stereotyping people and also, you know, let God show you who a person truly is. Don't try to assume that, you know, a person, um, because that's just something that we can't know fully without God's help and just pray for those people okay and pray and test each spirit no matter how good or bad you think they is okay um because sometimes the lord has told me many a times sometimes you think things are a certain way and things are not what they seem and so the lord told me this a lot guys when i first went through my spiritual awakening. So always pray when you're dealing with people so God can show you what it is or what it isn't with that person. And remember, love those that God loves. Okay? You cannot say that you love God if you do not love those that God loves. And if God can forgive us for all of the things that 
we do that are disrespectful, displeasing, hurtful to God, then it is understood that we should be the same way when dealing with others. And so with that, I'm saying, guys, when you're dealing with people, sometimes God has you in a position to be around others that he is trying to show them an example of his love of, or what it means to live in his ways through you. And a lot of times, guys, this process will not be easy, okay? And we know sometimes when the Lord has us in different missions or on different missions and dealings with people, it can be very uncomfortable, but you don't run from it. You pray and ask God to give you the things you need in them situations to be able to endure, you know, to live out God's will in that situation. And now if the Lord is telling you just over and over to, to separate yourself from this person, then you need to take heed and be obedient because if the Lord is doing that, there is something about this person that you cannot see that the Lord sees that is either going to bring harm your way or, you know, it's going to bring some form of destruction in your life to you. And the Lord is trying to protect you from it. But guys, I know sometimes we just want to wash our hands with the people that we love. And sometimes, guys, you know, I have been in those times a lot. You know, um, anyone that is walking in truth knows that it's very difficult to even ha have a conversation about God with those who are spiritually asleep or spiritually dead. And so because of that reason, when you've done it so many times, it's almost like you don't even want to try. But the thing of it is, is it's not about them listening at that moment. The Lord told me that it's about planting seeds. And even though that seed might not grow at that moment, at some place in that person's life, the Lord is going to manifest that, that seed to grow spiritually and he will make that person remember those seeds in that process you know um the lord is amazing how he speaks to his children and how he gives revelation of things and so no man can really say well lord you didn't tell me or you didn't show me because the Lord will make you see that each time one of his children was speaking to you and it was through him that they were speaking to you, he will make you remember that time. And so this is why at the end, when you go before God, you have no excuse to say Lord, you never gave me an opportunity to know you because if you do in that moment, you would not be speaking the truth. And so, guys, I just want you to know that, you know, God is love and this world is missing love. And it's important that even people who are being stubborn and are difficult and who seem mean and evil, even they deserve to know love. Even they deserve an opportunity to know love and to have a chance to come into God's love. And with that being said, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time, guys. Make sure, guys, that you go ahead and give me a like a comment 
and a subscribe. And don't forget to hit that noti bell. I will list my um, other social media platforms, guys, um, on the screen. <laughs> Okay, my beautiful, beloved family. So, guys, this is the finished look. I really like how it turned out, guys. It was really, really um, simple. Guys, I was so irritated earlier because come to find out some kind of way, my lash buddy that I ordered has been misplaced guys and i was just so sad earlier that i almost cried but the good thing was um when i ordered them two came in a pack so it worked out god is good but anyway guys i hope this video reaches you and well spirits guys i'm sending peace love and blessings to you and your family from me and mine guys don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, guys, go and check out my ministry channel at Power of Love Ministry, guys, to get updates about the word and messages that God um, gives to his beloved, um, dreams and visions that God gives to me, guys. And remember to be kind always because you never know um, who... God will send your way to encounter and your kindness, your love, your <clears throat> sympathy, empathy could be the difference in, in someone's life, guys. Always remember to show God's love to anyone you encounter. And guys, I love you so, so much. Remember that Jesus loves you way more. And remember, guys, real beauty starts from within and it radiates outward. But until next time, bye guys.